startup story behind the Clean Kilo, the UK's largest zero waste supermarket, is an inspiring one. Right from the beginning, the idea was to always have a wider environmental impact. Make it easier for shoppers to reduce their use of single use plastic. Meet Tom and Jeanette, founders of the Clean Kilo. As our interview took place during the working day, you're going to experience some background noise. However, the story is definitely worth it, and I've added subtitles. My name is Palvi, and this is In Pursuit Daily, the channel that provides actionable advice on how to pursue your own path towards success. So hit the subscribe button and notification bell to keep updated on our videos. Now back to the video. I was interested to know how Tom and Jeanette first got started. How it started was we watched A Plastic Ocean in 2017 and realised just how much plastic was affecting the environment and we didn't really know until that point like how devastating damage was. So we tried to reduce our own plastic consumption and found it really difficult because there was no place where you could get multiple products. Having realised the day-to-day -day challenges of a plastic-free lifestyle, they began to ask themselves a very important question. Why is there not a supermarket in Birmingham about plastic packaging? It was this question that helped them identify a gap in the market. They started to build a strategy that provided a simple solution to this problem. And the vision was to have a place where people could come to and bring their own containers and we buy in bulk and uh, it would be dispensed from our gravity dispensers and then they only get charged the contents inside so they can refill their containers at home and then obviously come back and bring their containers back here to refill and the idea is to just cut out the single use plastic and also like because you can buy as little as you need at the shop we want to reduce like food waste because often when you buy pre-packaged goods it's, uh, it's just too much, you don't use it all, it gets left in your cupboard or it gets wasted so those are kind of the, the clean killers mainly thought. There was just one thing though. Their idea involved a change in consumer habits. At the time, because it was a relatively new concept, they were like, oh, so people have to bring their own containers, yeah. is anyone going to actually do that? Um, and I guess because we believed in the concept and we knew there was a need for it because obviously the way that we consume single-use plastic, that's mm -hmm. not sustainable. So we just continued with it. They needed to identify their customer base and so took to the streets of Birmingham to see if there was genuine interest for a zero waste supermarket. We did a, a questionnaire really early on to make sure that there was a demand for it. We asked, I think in total it turned out to be about 100 different people. There was kind of feedback and quite a lot of people were like, yeah, it sounds like a really great idea. I would bring containers, but I'm not sure how many other people would. I think that's a good starting point to making sure that the people that your child audience are will actually want your product or service. While the survey showed some positive responses, it was their crowdfunding campaign that really got the attention of potential customers. Tom and Jeanette were on to something. We did our crowdfunding campaign um, to raise some funds for it and because so many people got behind it and, and, and donated money, um, we knew then that there was a lot of interest and a lot of people were going to be able to, going to want to come to our shop. The crowdfunding was, was like much more than just the money. The amount of momentum that gained because everyone felt quite involved in the project, so it became a community project and, and they were investing their time and money into it and obviously every share helped and every donation helped so those people felt like they were contributing towards this. And the confidence um, boost that it gave us. Yeah, and knowing that 500 people obviously contributed. They got themselves ready and opened their first store in June 2018. But with Tom and Jeanette being brand new to business, they needed to build up their business experience on the go. It was pretty difficult at first, especially for myself, having never worked in even a small business myself before. So I didn't really know what I was doing from the very beginning and it was it was a lot of learning on the on the job and making mistakes and learning from those and certainly but it took a lot more time probably to research for myself and get things moving because of still learning all of those kind of aspects of business. We've learned much more about retail because mm -hmm. neither of us was in like a retail industry. So just about like the space efficiency and the use of space and things like that. Stock control was kind of a big thing that I kind of didn't realise the importance of that until right, okay. like kind of a few months in like, oh, we don't know how much stuff we've got. <laughs> um, so that is one of the small things. For me, I didn't understand before we started about the importance of marketing and 
I just thought people would just come to the shop and that yeah. was like a given. But apparently you have to actually tell people it exists. <laughs> and also like Jeanette was talking about stock and, and accountancy side of things. Mm -hmm. and like personal banking is just what's in your account is what you've got. Mm -hmm. Whereas with business it's it depends on how much stock you've got and it, there's so much more to it and it's really more, a lot more complex and that for me was hard to get my head around at first. They also came across business challenges that were specific to running a zero waste store. Being zero waste there is actually a lot more cost involved. A lot of the supplies we go for they have to be sort of small to medium size because the very big ones that mass produce mm. won't change the way they do things to be able to send us a, a big container of whatever their product right. is. Yeah. The very small ones, they're not able to do it in a big enough amount for them to give us a, a, a margin to be able to sell it. So it has to be that kind of medium sized one which can be the product is more expensive mm. and so we have to pass that pass on to the customer. Yeah. We could buy cheap food in bulk but then where does the cheap food come from? Like who's lost out? The farmer or the, the producers? So there is a cost to food being cheaper but it's not who takes that cost. That is probably one of the challenges of zero waste, A, that the logistics is more expensive, the labour costs more expensive and also trying to keep it at Possible. They also had some advice for working together as a team. The most important thing is the values have to align, otherwise you're not going to make an agree on any decisions. So if your values align, so then what you're committing to doing is both of your passions, mm -hmm. then obviously you're going to give it 110%. It's important to make sure you all have different skills so that you're not all like trying to do the same job. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we have quite different skills. Yeah, so completely more, different. More sort of arty <laughs> and you're much more better at the sort of project managing and thinking, you know, uh, organising things. And when it comes to pursuing something you are passionate about, Tom and Jeanette realised firsthand how important it is to balance these ambitions with a strong business mindset. I think like a lot of people that do go into like a, an environmental business sometimes do it for the right reasons because they want to be positive towards the environment, but it is really important to have a balance of mm -hmm. like if you're going to pursue it as a business and it needs to be sustainable for you to continue doing it, then obviously you do have to have a more business mindset and know about marketing and all the other areas. Mm -hmm. And it was combining both their business acumen with their core environmental goals that led them to develop additional revenue streams. As well as like kind of having the retail shop, there are things, you know, the workshops which will help you learn and how to make things, so like making bees that's rare for your own soap or your natural beauty products. And I think that's really important in what we're trying to get the message out there that you actually can empower yourself, you'll save on the packaging and probably the nasty chemicals and the money. And as a bonus, it allowed them to recycle the knowledge they had learned along their business journey through events that taught others how to start and grow their own zero waste supermarket. I wanted to know more about their experience in building a supportive community and see what advice they had for other entrepreneurs. I think because we've kind of built a really strong kind of message and brand identity and what we're about, people believed in what we were doing. Since the crowdfunding, obviously, we had so much support. It's had a lot of coverage and uh, I think people just, they like it because they know it's um, ethical, it's, it's doing something good for the planet and, mm. you know, we're a small business, we're not, some high flyers and business people, like we're just two normal people that kind of pursued this and I think that's kind of why mm -hmm. it worked out quite well for us.